Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is T. Harv Ecker. Now, after 14 years of struggle, T. Harv Ecker cracked the code, and using the principles he teaches, went from zero to millionaire in only two and a half years, and has gone on to become a multi, multi, multi millionaire. During his years of hardship, Ecker vowed that should he ever get rich, he would help others do the same. He kept his promise and went on to build one of the largest success training companies in the world. He also shocked the publishing world with his book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, which is one of my favorite books of all time, top 10 books that I've read in my life. He hit number one on New York Times, USA Today, and Wall Street, uh, in the Wall Street Journal bestseller list the first week, and the book has now been translated into 42 different languages. T. Harv is considered to be one of the most exciting teachers on the planet, and his tough love, st his tough love style has changed the lives of over 1.5 million people from all around the world. I'm really excited uh, to welcome today Mr. T. Harv Ecker. Hey, how you doing? Fantastic. So I want to I want to kind of obviously we're going to be talking about a lot of the back end behind the book and this is just your your book has been a huge driver for you and a huge driver um, for your business. So we're going to dive all into that. Before we do that, I want to kind of take it back uh, to to the beginning and and that's more of why did you decide to first write the book and what was the purpose behind that book when you wrote it um two words uh credibility and um and marketing so one thing i think that people recognize is that a, a book just by its nature uh, gives you credibility and the reason for that is because um once you have written word in front of you and you wrote something and whether you're you're become kind of a teacher and so whether you're an author or a teacher or a directly or a trainer or anything where you're where you're actually expressing information and teaching people which a book is supposed to do by the way um there is a word that i think everybody listening needs to really recognize and that word is expert uh people like to deal with and buy from experts and if you understand that then you'll understand what you need to do to get people to want to continue to deal with you. Because the reason people will, will either deal with you or continue to deal with you is the T word. And the T word is trust. That's the number one reason people will buy anything. And so, at least from you. And so one of the ways to build trust is to build credibility. And one of the best ways to do that is to show your, that you are an expert by publishing something. So I did that to increase my credibility, show the expertise part of it. And, you know, that was all under the umbrella of, of marketing my seminars. Got it. Now, I hate to be crude, but you asked me a question, give you, give you the real, like, oh, well, I went out to change the world. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll talk about that after because that's a part of it. But you asked me a simple question. That's why I wrote that book. <laughs> When I, I assume you know that your your seminars are, is the best way that you can get in there and really change people. So by getting by having the book that gets them to that, you're going to be able to affect them more. Absolutely, absolutely. So take us through the process of writing that book. What was what was what was that like? Was it hard? Was it easy? Did it take a long time? What was it like? Well, you know, I guess I guess the. Um, because and i'll talk about this a little bit later if you ask me the the best situation was that i had this training already called the millionaire mind intensive it was a three-day program it's on the psychology of money success and wealth and um because it was one of the one of the good things and bad things you know good news and bad news um i am an over writer what i mean is that when i was writing this training i almost wrote it word for word now a lot of people do trainings and they write a couple of notes on a, on a sheet of paper or type something up or they just use a few a few um elements of their powerpoint and uh and you know just a few words here and there and they continue to talk and that's great that's not my style i'm a preparer i'm a writer and so i write i wrote those programs literally just about word for word now that took me at least you know six months longer to write that training than it would have normally taken the good news is that when it came to writing the book a lot of it was already kind of pre-written. I had to add a lot of ands and thes and all that kind of stuff. But that was the beginning of it. Now, how the whole thing came about was because I had a training company already and I was doing trainings, I have a friend that some of you might know his name. His name is Jack Canfield. 
And um, Jack uh, saw what I was doing. He saw the, 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 the lives we were changing. And, and man, I can, we, and that's the whole thing. I mean, you have to come from, if you know you can change people's lives, then you, then you can really talk about what you do. And we have a way um, of radically changing people's lives, especially their financial lives. And so when he saw what we were doing, especially when he was sending students, he saw what was happening to them, he, he actually suggested I have a conversation with his book agent. And I hadn't really thought too much about the book part. I'm too busy running these seminars, et cetera, but I knew I wanted to have one. And I had a conversation with her. She was all over it. We went for, we were gonna have a, a big uh, meeting in New York with five or six different publishers. Uh, we went to the first one and it was Harper, Harper Collins. And um, we, we cut a deal right there. <laughs> Um, for those of you who are interested, uh, I will say in, in all humbleness, because I'm sure it's more now, but my book, Series of the Million of Mine, came out in March of 2005, believe it or not. And I can tell you right now, it's like a baby. It grows very quickly. You don't go, oh my God, I would think it was like two years ago. <laughs> and at that time, I got the largest advance in the history of publishing for an unpublished author. I got a million dollars in front, up front. And, and then without them seeing the book. And so I never put together, here's interesting, I never put together a proposal. I never had a proposal. What I did is I had my seminar, which was like that. And then we kind of put together a couple of thoughts around it, but these formal proposal things, for some people you're gonna need them, for other people they don't really care. What they want is, will this book sell? And we were able to convince them for a very specific reason is why it, will definitely sell. So, you know, that was one of the, the key things around it. And I guess one, one, more, one more element around it was that, was that um, when it came to editing the book, I got, I got, I sent them my stuff, you know, my manuscripts, then they sent me back all these that were completely um, marked up. And, you know, I'm not the, I got D's in English, by the way. It's not mm -hmm. my bag, right? Me so too. People say all the time, you know, are, you know, you, you know, are you, know, you're, you, you know, you're a best, you're best selling author. And I go, and they go, but, you know, what do you mean your grammar isn't perfect and this and that? And you're, I go, listen, it doesn't say best writing author, it says best selling mm -hmm. author, right? There's a big difference, as I'm sure most of you have heard. And so literally, um, I took 90% of his edits and I crossed out the edits. And they were freaking out because Harper is a big company. They go, what are you doing? This is, you can't be doing this. And I go, I don't, if, if this is going to be working with you, I'm not going to work with you. I want it said in this way. It's not grammatically correct. I don't care. This is how I talk. This is the words I'm using. I'm not using big words. I'm not going to be complicated. This is how I speak. And this is the way I want it to sign. No one's going to buy this book. Okay, well, you know, a couple of million books later, I guess somebody was a little incorrect about that. So, um, this is important for everybody to understand, and, and I'm going to just not wait for you to ask me questions. I really want to get uh, as much value and good information to your folks as possible, if that's okay with you. And so the, the reason, like, how did this thing go, number one, in New York Times and, and Wall Street Journal, you'll say, in, in the first week, week out, and the reason was with pre-sales. What's the word, everybody? Write that down. Pre-sales. Meaning I had orders for this book literally from six months until the book was launched. For six months, I had been selling the book. How? By pre-selling it. Where? In rooms, online, et cetera, et cetera. People were making reservations for the book. And then when it came time for the book to be published, then we put the email out and say, your reservation is now ready. You can now purchase the book. Okay. We did it that way. We did it a few other ways, which I'll tell you about after. But if you have to understand that if you want to get on any of these lists, your books will need to be sold in a big clump all at once. I'm sure you tell people that Chandler, and I'm sure a lot of all your other guests say the same thing. But if you think that you're going to sell, you know, 5,000 books a week for the next 50 weeks, that's fantastic. What is that? Like, you know, 250,000 books. That's great you're not gonna be on any bestseller list, zero, none. Why? Because 5,000 books ain't gonna get you anywhere. 
Understand? Unless it's in a very, very short time. So if you get 5,000 books on Amazon in an hour, you probably hit number one. Okay. If you, I sold 52,000 books, hardcover books in my first week. All right. That's how we got to do. And you know, I just squeaked out because you know who sold 51,000? Harry Potter. So I beat out Harry Potter. All right. <laughs> I beat out Joel Olstein by 1500. And that guy's like, uh, you know, a crazy guy. He sells, he has a ready-made audience, which I'll tell you about in a minute here. And so how, how were we able to do this? Obviously live trainings, pre-selling. And as many of you will learn with other people and myself, you do this through a launch to your own database and through joint venture partners. And in order also for these books to count on the bestseller list, if that's important to you, and I'll tell you why it might be in a second. For your account, you can't sell them. They have to be sold by authorized channels. And those authorized channels actually cannot just be online. They also must be, because you know the book publishing world is dinosaur, even, and so you have to have, you know, Barnes and Nobles and, and any, any, you know, retailer, the New York Times has about, 30 different retailers that they actually work, like real bookstores that they work with, plus uh, uh, some wholesale onliners and some, and some of the normal onliners like Amazon, BN, and et cetera, et cetera. You need to have an array of these channels that your book is sold in. Because if you miss too many channels, they're just, doesn't matter. You can sell 100,000 books and they're not going to care. You won't get on the list. So you've got to spread your sales out. And how do you do that? Well, in one of the letters that you send to you through JVs or your own database, you say this offer is if you go to this online, Amazon. Another one says BNN. Another one says if you go to this bookstore and buy it at a retail store, then you'll, you'll get this and this, which I'll tell you about in a second here. So you want them to go to different channels. Channel, does that make sense at all? Yep, that makes perfect sense. And do you yeah. folks know about this stuff already or not really? Somewhat. I mean, this is a, this is a, a little bit deeper, so I think it's good because this is like this this is really the inner workings of those big lists. Exactly, right. So, and the other thing about it is that you can't buy all the books yourself, okay? Uh, that used to be the case. You know who ruined that for everybody? A guy named Charles Givens. He wrote a book called uh, something about what wealth and real estate or whatever it was. And he was a millionaire already, a multimillionaire. <clears throat> and what he did is he, he went and he had people go to the bookstores and buy, buy out the bookstores. And then he took all the books, literally, literally a hundred thousand books and put them in a warehouse. And he rose to the number one New York times. He got on all the you know, USA. I mean, uh, today's show, good morning, America everywhere. And he, you know, he killed it. But then they found out that he was the one that bought all the books. Right. So it actually worked really well for him because when he did that, you'd go into a bookstore and they'd be sold out. So then you'd have to, you know, well, now I really want it, of course. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, he did really, really well, but they changed the rule right after him. The other thing about that is so generally they need to be single sales. Wow. Single sales. That means if you have a company that buys a thousand books, guess what? on the New York Times list or on the Amazon list for the most part, that's gonna count as one sale. What? One sale. So there's no shamming it, there's no scamming it, at least the way that I do it or I know of it, and I wouldn't wanna do that anyways. You actually have to, if you sell 52,000 52, books, they're gonna be just 52,000 people. And as I said, the key to my success, which I'd like to impart for you, is you've got to create a situation where you are pre-selling reservations to your book so that when it comes out, you have a list to go to and literally there could be five, 10, 20,000 people who buy on that day or that week. What was the biggest driver uh, for you of all those pre-sales? Was it seminars? Was it those JV partners that you talked about? What is, was it something else? For me, it was seminars and because I was already in the seminar business. And so, um, you know, I already had a large database and I had people coming to my trainings literally 
700 to a thousand people a night, three, four times, three or four nights a week. So that was, that was my vehicle. In those days, live trainings were the, all the rage. Well, especially our live trainings. We did really, really, really well. And, um, and so I had the audience in front. And so, you know, when, when we get to that point, I'll, I'll talk about the platform and everything like that, but definitely for me. And then, you know, having joint venture partners that I was already dealing with in the seminars, then when they, I said I was coming out with a book, they were all over it. And they said, of course, you know, you've always supported us. We'll support you. Got it. Now, I want to take a, a, a step back real quick and then we'll keep moving. How, how did you convince, I want to touch on the, the getting the million dollar publishing deal uh, as an unpublished author. How did you do that? And how, that, how did you convince them that you're going to be, be able to move a lot, of, a lot of copies of your book? Okay, this is the secret, everybody. This is the secret sauce. One of the, and I've been, I've been alluding to it, but I want to make sure everyone's really clear on this. I would say the the best is, I, so I had semi-retired already when I was running a training company in, in, um, in San Diego. And then I moved to Canada, to Vancouver, and I moved, it, moved there because I'm a Canadian citizen and I wanted to get my green card. And so I had to move back to Canada in order to facilitate that and open my company there, et cetera, et cetera. I remember I hadn't worked in about a year or so, and I remember walking along the, the, uh, the boardwalk in Vancouver. And I was definitely going to write a book. I, I wasn't sure which it was going to be. I had a few different topics that I felt I could teach. Because don't forget, I had, I had gone from zero to, to, to multimillionaire. Uh, I started with a $2,000 credit card loan and opened one of the first retail fitness stores in the world. And, and then from there, sold that and just, you know, things started to gel really, really well. I learned some ways of making money and I was able to teach those ways that really work in the real world, right? So, um, so people started asking me. So I say, okay, I'll write, I'm going to write this in a book. And, and I say, all right, well, I, and, and I was also very involved in something called accelerated training, super learning. So I was very involved in learning how to do that. So I was thinking, should I write the book first or should I write a training? And I'm thinking literally for a couple of weeks, I'm going to write the book like that. And all of a sudden when I was walking, I got this, I guess you call it a, a hit, some kind of intuition. And then like a voice came to me and it said, Harv, why do you think? that everyone's going, you're going to sell a million books. People up here don't even know you. And actually only the people in your trainings would know you. And I was just doing very limited trainings when I was in San Diego, cause I already made my money in, in, in other industries. And so it dawned on me, you know what? You don't have any magic sauce. Nobody really knows you, you know, that might not work at all. And then another thought came to me is I, how do you even know what to write? How do you even know people are going to like this? How do you even know it makes sense? And I started thinking about this. I said, you know what? I'm not going to write the book. I'm going to put eight people in a room, in a living room, and I'm going to test my stuff out on them first and see if they actually understand it, see what the hot buttons are, see where the confusion is, and see how if I can explain what I'm teaching in a way that people really get it. And I did that. And my friends, that was the best move of my life because from that eight two weeks later came another eight because i learned so much in that first time of what not to do and how not to explain things and then i did another eight people and then i did 30 people and then i ended up doing like a couple hundred people at a time and i would say this to everybody um and i was going to save it for a little bit later but listen uh i, I everyone's going to tell you write your but i'm going to say don't write your book first. <laughs> I'm going to say, test your material out first. Make sure that you can express it in a way that when you say something, you really feel like it lands on people and people are giving you feedback that this is important. This changed my life. This changed my business. This changed my relationship, whatever it is. Because one thing about a book that is great and not great, it's, it's freaking permanent. Unless it's an ebook where you can change it all the time. Once that's in a hard copy, man, that's going to be out there. And if you've got something that's hard to understand, if you've got something that people actually disagree with, and you've got, you got a point and people go, that's, the, that's a bunch of BS, you're stuck with it. So I would, rather, I would rather put this out to people first and don't say, well, I'm, I'm testing my stuff out for the, a book. No. Say, 
I have some things I want to teach you. These are the principles that made me successful or whatever is I can teach you relationships. I can teach you how I want to teach it to you live or on a webinar or in a certain way, whatever it is, and test it out on people. Get the feedback. I promise you, if you do that, the quality of your book will, will go up by a thousand times. Got it. So ha, ha, was it having that and being armed with that and with the testimonials that when you went to the table to get the deal, they were just like, oh, okay. And, and no, then it was, it was the fact that I had a platform hmm. that I had a big database that I had, let's see, at that time we were already closing in. We were a year away from being the largest training company in the world. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm sure I'm not in that category. How can I do it? Exactly the same way. Remember, I started with nothing. Okay. I started with eight people, all right, in my living room. And to get them there, I had to feed them lunch, right? They wouldn't come, right? <laughs> and so when I went, when we went to Harper, they were like, they were like salivating when we told them how many, you know, so Harv generally speaks in front of between 700 and 1,000 people per night, three nights a week. What? We don't have any other authors to do that. Okay. Most of their other authors are deadbeats. Okay. So it's like very few of them are, are actually in the arena. And so is Harv able to sell and market the books? Well, Harv is a marketer. Harv, that's what Harv does. He's, he is an entrepreneur first. And then he taught people how to make a lot of money like he did. So don't forget, I never started out to be a, a speaker or a trainer. I, no, I'm, I was like, the least in school, you'd say, oh, that's the least, the least likely to be a trainer. I wouldn't put my hand up if you paid me. And they said, go to the front and, and, and present this. I would be dripping wet. I would, I would skip class if I knew I had to present. I hated it. There's no way. All right. So what the hell now I teach 5,000 people at a shot, you know, literally constantly. Why is that? Because when I first started again, I was a business person. And I went through 10 businesses that did not work, okay? Complete blow-ups. And so I learned mostly what not to do. And I was doing all the seminars, reading all the books, listening to all the tapes in those days. And I was doing everything they told me to do. And you know what? I was broke. And finally, I learned some principles uh, about how rich people do business, which is radically different than how people who just want to earn a living do business. And when I learned these principles, I put them to the test. I started, started with a $2,000 credit card loan, as I mentioned, and I became a millionaire in two and a half years. And then a multi, multi-millionaire from there. And so people started asking me, go, Harv, like, we knew you were, you were bumming rides. You were always borrowing five bucks for, you know, for a pizza or, or for some gas or whatever. How did you get, like, how, look at your house, look at your car. Well, I said, well, listen. And they go, what do you do? Tell me what you, and I started telling them. And they're like, what? I've never heard this kind of stuff before. And so that's when I knew that I, and so I just started telling people, I wasn't teaching anything, it wasn't formal. I just, and I could get the feedback that like, holy moly, this people need this stuff. So I started t telling more and more. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to make it a little more formal. I started studying super learning and how to present it in a way that is, you know, the way that to learn faster and remember more, et cetera. And putting out my real the, the principles that actually really work in the real world together with accelerated training technologies, which is your, your, my USP, my unique selling proposition, it, it just exploded. So I was already getting thousands of people per week in my mm -hmm. room and when Harper realized that it was game over. Now, how do, what, what about you? All right, everybody write this down. The first thing you need to do is it okay to tell people this right now or yep. you want to ask more questions? Let's do it and we'll, then we'll keep going with the questions. Okay, good. All right. The first thing that you need to do, everybody, if, if you want to do it the way, you know, I suggest you do it, do it any way you want, you know, but most, most uh, authors are broke and I'm freaking rich. So you do whatever you want. Okay. So I'm, 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 I'm never been on a talk like this before. I don't do these type of things. I teach my stuff, um, but I want to help people who are, are in our arena. The first thing you have to do is you have to build a platform. You have to get a platform first. Who are you selling your book to? So you write this book, blah, blah, blah. You write the book. Now what? Now what? Now what do you do? You start selling the book to who? To what? A bunch of joint venture partners. Do you have those joint venture partners? Well, probably not. Why? Because you have no list. 
Why should someone be a joint venture partner with you when you have no list? You see, joint venture partners got a list. So the best thing you could do is start building a database, build a database. And that way, when your book comes out, you can sell to your own database and you can, you can sell to joint ventures databases. Why? Because the joint ventures will now mail for you. Why? Because they want to get a reciprocity on your list. Also, they want you to mail for them. Now it doesn't always work out quite that way, but there's not going to be a lot of money in them mailing for you, for your book. I can tell you that, right? So got to be thinking, why would a joint venture mail for me? This guy's got a list of a hundred thousand people. Would you mail for me? No. What? Who are you? I didn't know you. Well, I have a list of a hundred thousand people. Really? What are they like? Would you mail for me? Will you mail for me? Yes. Yes. Good. There's a partner right there. So you've got to have a database. I would recommend that's how I did it to start with. And how do you build that? You build it with blogs, you build it with, with newsletters, you build it with, with, you know, webinars and trainings and any way that you can impart your information and collect your database and frequency, keep up with the database, keep them engaged, build your database. And that will become your holy grail to success at everything. Love it. That's a great tip. Now, you've talked about this a little bit, but let's talk about where your business was when you released the book and kind of how the book had an effect on your business and how you leveraged the book on the back end to grow your business. Yeah. So at the time that I was, before the book came out, I was teaching uh, four different seminars. And when the book came out, we said, first of all, by the way, your book better be good. Well, I'll change that. Your book better be fantastic. It's got to be a life changer. Because if it isn't, why should anybody spend their time, money about it? And if it's not, here's the thing. You want your book to be able to sell your back end, right? You want people to get introduced to you from the book. The top of the funnel is this $20 item or whatever it is. And they get introduced to you. And then what's their next step? Well, you say you have this, this, and this to offer. That's wonderful. But here's the, the, the bad news, my friends. If your book isn't killer, you think they're going to go to the next stage with you? Nope. And that Chandler is the biggest problem most people have. They kind of know, well, if I get a book out there and I get my database and I put some programs behind it and this and that, I can sell. But you know what? And I'm sure Chandler, you tell people, the most important part of this is the quality of your book. If your book is crap, they think the rest of what you got is crap. They're not going to go any further. The reason they went further with me is because, you know, as Chandler said, it's in his top 10 books and it's actually voted by, I don't know who exactly, but I guess hundreds of thousands of, of readers and whatnot of, of, of certain elements, uh, the, in, in the top five books of financial books of the decade of the decade. And the, actually it was number two, you know, it was number one, rich dad, poor dad, my friend, Robert Kiyosaki. So, and by the way, how did Robert do it? Robert simple. You think Robert, Oh, I wrote an amazing book. Let me sell it. No one guy read Robert's book. That guy happened to be the leader and the owner basically of Amway. Database, 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 platform. Okay. That's what you need to do. Get in with a, a large group. So for me, I started with literally three programs. Once the book came out and the room started filling up more and more, I went to, and here's my view of it. It's a funnel, right? So that you start with the very top people get introduced to you. Then the next program, the next thing they do should be a little more money, hopefully, whether it's $50, $95, um, $200, et cetera. For me, it's, you know, a $300 program and they come to this three day program and then they get to purchase. If they like this program, they get to purchase other programs that are more in the rounds of one, two, three, four thousand dollars and they're longer and they're more advanced programs. All right. And so this is what happened for me, Chandler. And that is that with, with every time I had a group of people, which, you know, let's say the third or fourth level down and I had, and now I had, you know, a thousand people in the room, I have nothing else to offer them. So what did I do? I wrote another course. There's no way I'm going to have a thousand people in my room and not offer them something. Okay. I ended up Chandler with 19 programs from three programs because every time there was a group in my room, 
I would offer them a new program. And many times I'd say, so, you know, what's the next thing you need to learn? Da, 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 whatever it is. And they would say that. And then I'd say, you know what? And by the end of that program, I'd say, here's the title of the program. Da, 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 it's going to be in, 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 uh, in 90 days, da, 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 same place, same price, whatever that. And I'd have 800 people register right there. That become that is because of quality, my friends. I'm not boasting. I, I mean to be as humble as possible. I'm I'm alerting you that if your stuff is junk, you will go nowhere. If your stuff is mediocre, you will do very mediocre. If your stuff is good, you will do good. If your information and your methodology of marketing is fantastic, you will do fantastic. Two keys: quality and marketing. And both better be 11s out of 10s. That's fantastic. Now, a follow-up question to that, because this is something that I get all the time, is, oh, man, I don't want to put all my best stuff in my book. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you know, because I was running seminars, which are less data, there's data and there's experiential exercises and all that, it made it a little bit easier for me to put parts of the book, uh, parts of the seminar in the book, okay? But here's the thing, everyone, you only put a part of it and then you seed, pre-sell, seed within your book what you're going to offer. So meaning in my book, literally, there's gotta be, I don't know, you've read it, Chandler, what, 20, 30 times where I say, if you like what you're learning here, you're going to love the three-day live Millionaire Mind Intensive where you'll get to go deeper, do exercises, da, 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 change it, recondition, da, da, da. So that's a good point. You want to make sure that there's a quite a distinction between what you're doing for your book, what you're giving people, and what you're doing on your back-end product. And it can be less of, it can be say, there's 10 points. And there's just touching on the book. There's just touching on it. And there it goes way deeper in the program where they actually get to do it uh, online or, or whatnot. Or you do one in one of the 10 points in full in your book. And that's what your book's about. And then you say, um, there's, this is one out of 10 critical elements to creating wealth. Uh, in my program, da, 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 my online program for $395, you will learn the other nine. If you like this book, register for da, 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 da. So you can do both of that. Now, one more thing I want to add, and I don't want to hog the conversation here, but I really want to get as much in as I possibly can. Everybody listen closely. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare try and launch your book without your back end being in place. You understand what I'm saying? To launch a book with nothing to offer after the book is a fool's errand. Why? Because a book's like, what, 20 bucks? If it's in a normal book, if it, it could be a... Uh, an ebook, it might even be seven bucks. You think you're going to get rich on seven bucks? You probably won't. Okay. The I always say this, write this down, everybody. The headaches are in the front end, but the money's in the back end. I'm going to say that again. The headaches are in the front end, but the money's in the back end. The back end is what do you offer your, your clients, your, your, your people, your audience, your readers, whatever, after they've purchased the first thing from you? How do you support them? And you don't do this in order to, oh, I'm going to sell the crap out of them. I mean, some people do. A lot of people do. I don't do that. I'm always thinking about how can I serve this person that just purchased that from me? What do they need next? What else do they need? How, I, they've already told me that they need this area. What else would go better go along with that? And then, I, and then I create that. Now, by the way, if you, don't, if you can't create it yourself, you can always get other people, use other people's stuff. Not to not, I'm not saying you use it and pass it off as your own, but let's say, let's say, let's say, for example, you've got, you got no information on your own. All right. Well, what do you do? Well, you can have a multi speaker situation where like Chandler's got a summit going. You could have a summit. Uh, you could have a, a monthly uh, program where every month you're dealing, you're, you're interviewing a T. Harbecker, Brian Tracy, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ken Blanchard. Uh, the, you know, every month you're dealing with something. So you don't have to have your own information right? You just have to have a topic that your people want and you need to support them. It's so all be thinking, how do I actually really help these people? So you must have what you're going to offer your database, your, your process, your readers before you release the book. Once you release the book and all heck breaks loose, I hope, and you got nothing. Now you deserve what you get and that's going to be zero. 
Got it. So you you planned your back in leading up and you knew, hey, exactly where, well, obviously you did because it was in the book and, and the links were in there so that they could take the next step with you. Yeah, if you're not sure what it's going to be for sure, and you're still writing the book, but you have an idea and you don't want to know, ex you don't know exactly, then just put your, your website for information on this and this and this and, and, uh, and our new program coming out, uh, go to this website and then right on the, when they hit the, the website page right away featuring, you know, new release, blah, 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 or $97, uh, uh, four part summit webinar on blah, blah, blah. Got it. Now you better what, what was what? So most people say book, 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 book. A book is 20 bucks. You ain't going to get rich on 20 bucks. You're going to get rich on the, the 97 that leads them to the 300 that leads them to the thousand that leads them to the 3000. That's how you're going to get rich in this business. Anyways. Awesome. Yeah. What was, what was one surprising way that you made money off the back end of your book? And then maybe just one surprising thing that you didn't expect when you launched the book, but that's, that's happened as a result of launching that book. Um, people starting coming to me who, you know, I probably would have tried to get to them and I probably wouldn't have been able to, but because of the book, um, people started coming to me. So have you heard of Nightingale Conant? Well, in, you know, 10 years ago, they were the, by far the largest audio, um, education company in the world. I don't know how they're doing now, but you know, they came to me and they say, Oh my God, you know, you have a, we, can you create an audio version for your book that we can use and we'll niche it a little bit differently. And I got to tell you, it's, it's very interesting. I still make a few thousand bucks a quarter, you know, literally now eight years later, nine years later, I get, you know, literally 5,000, 8,000 checks in every quarter. I go, what the hell is this? So Nightingale Con. Oh my God, I did it like, it took me two hours and it's still going. Right. And then, um, PBS came to me, you know, PBS. So public uh, broadcasting, oh, we love your stuff. We wanted you to do a uh, an infomercial. Tell oh, well, that was a different thing, uh, um, a, uh, a PBS special. So that was a very interesting uh, situation too. I also made an infomercial. Uh, a, a group came to me, say, love your stuff. You can change lives. We sell a, a, a lot of this stuff. You know, we'll have a home learning course and we're going to do an infomercial with you. So it really, when people like your book, you see a book is easy to give away. A book is easy to, to, it's like a calling card, right? But remember what I said, everybody, it better be good. Not good, great. You've got, I, how many edits did I do on this book? I don't know, 50, 50 edits? No, no way. Yeah. Are you a bad writer? Well, maybe I'm a bad writer. I don't know. But you know what? I, I, I'm not going to say I agonized over every word, but every word was the way I wanted it to be. And the principles work in the real world. That's the most important thing. That stuff actually works in the real world. I became wealthy based on it, based on the, what's in the book. So I know for a fact it works. And I have you know, well over a million students who have also done really, really well. So I know it works. But that's the thing. So I'm going to give you one word. I want you to write it down, okay? If you, this is about marketing and sales. Like, People say, Harv, you either, okay, you talk too much or you're too loud, you're too boisterous, you're, you know, you're, uh, you know, um, you, you sound like you're angry, whatever. Okay, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really give a shit, you know, because I am who I am. And this is the way I speak when I'm passionate about something. And passion, passion is critical. And most people are just freaking boring to death to tears and you go like, oh, why would I buy their stuff? They're boring, okay? If they're boring and talking to you, they're gonna be boring in their book. And so it's very, very important that, you know, you use your own voice and, and you use the best of your voice, the most excited voice. But I'm gonna give you a word now that it's critical. Write it down, please. The word is conviction, conviction. You need to market with conviction and you need to write with conviction. You need to know your stuff works. If you're writing weight loss, you better have lost weight and you better have helped quite a few people lose weight before you put your pen to paper, okay, so to say, or step on that keyboard. Because don't write a bunch of BS. You know, we teach a program called Train the Trainer, another one called Making the Stage that we do in, in Thailand every year just for 60 people, like it's a private thing and not private, but you know, just it's expensive. So people, so only a few people can, can be there. And we all, it's, it's personal coaching, so we can only take 60 people. But I'm still in shock at people who come there and they'll spend like 10 grand or 12 grand to be there and they'll, they'll come in and they, 
you know, they haven't really written anything and that will teach you how to do that. But their stuff is, I said, well, what have you done in your life? Well, what do you mean? Well, what have you accomplished? Well, what do you mean? Well, what are you writing about? I, I want to help people um, make a lot of money. Okay, are you rich? No. Are you financially free? No. Do you make a lot of money? No. Then why do you want to help people make a lot of money? Because I want to make a lot of money. You're bogus. You're out of here, okay? You have no right to teach what you're teaching here. Listen, every single person listening right now, you have a right to teach something. You can't just make up some BS because you think you're going to make a lot of money. If you want to make a lot of money, don't focus on money. This is the stuff I'm teaching now. If you want to make a lot of money, everybody, don't focus on money. That's the worst thing to focus on. People pay you for what? For helping them, for solving a problem for them. You focus on solving a problem for more people, more and more and more and more people. If you solve a problem for a lot, a little people, a few people, you're going to make a few, a few money. If you solve a, a problem for some people, you're going to make some money. If you solve a problem for a lot of people, you're going to make a lot of money. It's as very simple as that. Focus on helping people. If you really do that and you market properly, like we're teaching you here, like Chandler's teaching you, if you market, you put those two things together, you're going to kill it. That's fantastic. Now, a couple final questions. Um, so you obviously talk a lot about the inner game, right? In your book and, and it's secrets of the millionaire mind. What are some things uh, inside here that you feel like are holding people back from successfully launching uh, or writing and publishing their first book? Like what are some mindsets that you feel like hold people back? Okay. Every mindset that holds people back is the same mindset. Write it down. It starts with an F. It's four letters. There's no U in it. <laughs> F-E-A-R, fear, fear, all right? Can anybody give me the definition of fear? The definition? People go, uh, false evidence appearing real. That's not a definition, my friends. That's an acronym. The definition of fear is, write this down, everyone, anticipation of pain. Anticipation of pain. When is that anticipation? Past, present, or future? It's future. So it's future tense. In other words, Thinking about the future and being worried about it or not confident about it, et cetera, et cetera. That's what fear is. So what holds people back, Chandler? Simple. Fear, 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 and more fear. And all you have to do is start listing the fears. So uh, obviously, what if nobody buys my book? That's a big fear. What if, what if nobody reads my book? <laughs> okay. They, they buy it and they don't like it. What if people don't like my book? What if it takes me an enormous amount of time and it's not worth it. What if, what if, what if? That's your mind's way of keeping you stuck in the place you're at, keeping you with what's familiar. Your mind is a protective mechanism. Its job is survival. And it was like that. It's like a sentry on the ship. The sentry would prefer that the ship is, stays docked, right? That's its job. It doesn't, you know, its job is to warn of danger. It doesn't want you going out there with the icebergs and the rocks, okay? And so your mind's job is survival, means protection. It wants to keep you the same. Here's, what, here's the simple piece of advice I will give to everybody. And this is you know, what I teach. This is where, 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 where I am. This is my unique proposition. This is how I'm different. So you're going to have a thought. You have all these, all these thoughts. Number one, you notice if it's a fear. It will be. Okay. Number two, fears will always be there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you're afraid. The people that create success in their life do this. Write it down. Act in spite of fear. Act in spite of fear, okay? Even though you feel afraid, you can still act. Have you ever gotten in front of a, up in front of a group at a, at a wedding or a this or that, and people say, hey, say a few words. You go, oh my God, like oh, whatever it is. And they say, and you go, oh, and you're scared. But do you do it? Yeah, the worst, maybe they don't come out perfect, but they come out. You can still act in spite of fear, all right? And so when you hear, when you hear words, your inner voice telling you anything that's not supportive. Oh, what if nobody, the favorite words are two words. What if, what if it doesn't work? What if nobody buys it? What if I can't sell anything? What if this, what if that, what if the writing is crap, blah, 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 blah. You know what, what if, what if, what if, what if, whenever you hear what if you're going to use your own four magic words that I'm going to give you right now, everybody write them down. These will be the most important words in your whole life. Are you ready? Here they are. You hear, a non-supportive thought go through your head. And by the way, I hear them every couple of seconds, always. What do you say to your, your mind, to your thoughts? 
Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing the four magic words. You say that to your mind and you come back to the present moment. Okay, what am I doing right now? Okay, I'm on this interview right now and I'm talking with Chandler and, and there's an entire audience and I, and I, and I really uh, would like to give them as much as possible. That's what I'm doing right now, period over and out. Yeah, but you know what? In, in an hour and a half, you have, you're supposed to be in this big meeting and if, and if it doesn't work out, you're going to lose this big account and all that kind of thing. You know, Okay, that's fear. That's not now. That's always going to be in the future. Come back to now. You simply say, don't buy what your what your mind is saying to you. Don't you can hear it, but don't listen to it. Don't believe it. So I have a saying that says this: Don't believe a thought you think, because most of those thoughts are not supportive. Don't listen to them. Just keep on plugging away. Do what you've been taught to do. Put your head down, focus, and just do what you need to do. And when your mind, which it's always going to do, comes up with a fear or an issue, a negative, whatever. Thank you for sharing. Back to work. That's awesome. Love that. Final question I have. What are what are some of your parting tips for people thinking about writing uh, and publishing their first book? Well, I think I've, I've given you quite a bit already. Um, number one, uh, make sure you have a platform first. Number two, make sure that you have a back end prior to the release of your book. Um, number three, and so you're rebuilding your, your back, your, your database. Um, number three, make sure that you've got some nice bonuses to give away with the people who buy your book. And those bonuses should be worth a lot. In other words, if your book's worth 20 bucks, if the bonus is worth, you know, three bucks, who's going to get excited? Think about this, everybody. Are you going to get excited? You've got a busy day. You've got 100 emails. you got this guy. You get an email from somebody about John's book called blah, 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 blah. And you go, okay, well, well it sounds okay. And it says, uh, free bonus. You get a, a popsicle. Okay. Okay. Well, you're going to take your – no. You want to make it so that the bonus is actually worth way more than the book. So – if you order the book right now, I'm going to give you my webinar called blah, 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 blah. And my coaching, my group coaching call that's called blah, 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 blah. Those two together are worth $200. For those of you registering for my book in this time, I'm going to give it to you as my gift. And it's like, whoa, okay, that sounds pretty good. In other words, give them a, a, good, a good deal and they'll take the deal. Um, number three. Um, again, do talks and, or that was four, do talks and teaching and, 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 and get feedback on blogs and webinars that before you write, know what people want and what they agree with, what they don't agree with, what they're getting. Can you imagine writing something and then people feedback going, that's a bunch of crap. That didn't work for me. That doesn't, you know, you go, oh my God, you want to make sure your, your stuff is, is not accepted. You just, just write a book. You know what I mean? Now, if you had your own experience and that's it for you, always write those words. In my experience, da, 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 da. don't say this is this is the rule of law. No, in my experience, it worked for me. Okay. Um, number four, write the way you speak. If you read my book and you'll think you're people say, right, Chandler, they think that they're listening to me. It's exactly the way I talk, mm -hmm. right? I don't, I don't, uh, I don't use big words. I don't, I mean, I remember I only went to one year of college because I was in a hurry to get rich and that didn't work. And so I learned that the hard way, street smart way. Um, and, and so right the way you speak. Num number five, it's got to be different. If your book sounds or even looks the same as everybody else's, you're going to get the same as everybody else, which is pretty broke. Okay. There, what is there? 20,000, 30,000 books, eBooks, whatever published a month. You want to be one of those? No, you've got to stand out. The question people will always be asking you is, especially on any media, any interview, anything, what's unique about this? How is your book any different? And then you've got to be able to say, well, what's different about this book is we get into the blah, blah, blah. And we have, or we have a different system. Or we have four ways to do this that nobody seems to tell anybody. Or whatever it is. Uh, we've got a way of doing this in uh, uh, not only losing weight, but losing it quickly and in a healthy manner. Most people, they have, if they're going to lose their weight quickly, they're going to get sick and they're going to gain it back very, very quickly. 
This is the first time we've been able to have a weight loss program that actually works quickly and is healthy and you can actually live this way. In fact, by the end, we're going to be telling you to eat more and more. So it's like, wow, quick and healthy. That's different. Whatever it is for you, you've got to have a difference. And that's got to be not just in, in the way you write, but your unique proposition. Otherwise, there's no, and one last thing, know how your stuff is timely, timely. Why? Because to get on media, believe it or not, they don't even care if it's good as much as it's timely. Everything in the media, timing, timing, timing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, I've been getting calls on my book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Why? Because it has the word millionaire. Why? Because of Donald Trump and the election. That's why all of a sudden they're getting, hey, uh, we're with uh, you know, CRBT and want to do an interview with you. Uh, well, why? Oh, you wrote the billionaire mind, right? Okay. Do you think Donald Trump has a millionaire mind? Uh, okay. So that's why they want, right? So it's timely right now, that type of thing. So make sure that, that you have a way of, of being timely. And if it's timeless, fit it into timely all, uh, uh, as the media progresses. And one last thing, final thing is, Here's how you, if you go with a publisher, and a lot of people want to do that because they want the credibility and all that. The credibility comes in your bit, your book really being, you know, going near the top of the list. That's where credibility comes. And it helps maybe a little bit if you've got a formal publisher. I don't know about how much, but a little bit. But I'm going to say this right now, everybody. Don't sign your life away. Don't sign your life away with a publisher. Why? Because I'm going to give you a new, more realistic way to spell the word publisher. And here it is. Write it down. P-R-I-N-T-E-R. -E publisher. It spells printer. Because 90% of publisher, all they do is print. They're going to tell you they're going to do the world for you. You know what? Not going to happen. You heard this before? They gave me a million bucks and they still did diddly squat. And everything he did was weak, weak. And I sold literally over a million books myself, me, okay, on stage and through online, et cetera, a million. Now we're probably at two and a half million, th almost three million books. And you asked me about one surprise. Let me give you one last one, okay? One surprise about foreign rights and all that stuff. My book, uh, Secrets of Million Mind, has sold over a million copies in Brazil alone in Portuguese. And here's the cool thing. I didn't even know that. And I got a call from a promoter in Brazil and he goes, we'd love to have you come down to Brazil and do a seminar. I go, okay, well, we can do that. I've got to start with it. You know, first going to build a database. I have this JVs after that. Build, build, build that. He goes, what do you mean? Just the people who read your book would, would fill up the room in a, in a heartbeat. I go, well, what do you mean? How many people read the book? He goes, a million. What? So we opened Brazil last summer, uh, sorry, last fall, and uh, we killed it. It was fantastic. We, you know, we made over a million dollars in one weekend net. Are you interested in wow. that? So yeah, can a book help you? Yeah, but you better do it the right way. And if you're um, interested in, you know, in what we do, you know, and, and how we do it, then maybe you can model us a little bit. That's fantastic. Harv, this has been great. You've been dropping uh, value bombs galore. Uh, value I know bomb. we could go for on. <laughs> I know we could go on and on and on. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on and for sharing with us today. Where can people go to find out more about you, more about what you're doing, and and, and check out other stuff that you guys have to offer? Well, what would be the best thing for you guys would be um, I have a new, I, I have an, an ebook an ebook uh, that I just released that's that's quite amazing. It's called Speed Wealth, How to Stop Earning a Living and Start Creating Wealth. And what can I tell you? I think you'd be well advised to get this book. Uh, why? Okay. Uh, first of all, when I say quickly, you know, in other words, Speed Wealth, um, I went from zero to millionaire in two and a half years. I can show you through this book, we'll show you how anyone can go from zero to millionaire in three years or less. Anybody, okay? Um, number number two around that is uh, it'll also show you how you can become a multi, 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 multi millionaire in less than five years. So it's about speed wealth. It's a, I like book titles that do exactly, that are all about exactly what, what the book's all about. Um, the problem, the reason I think this is important is because 
most people, 95% of the people that are out there that I see, they're positioned for not wealth. They will not create wealth. They're, they've set their situation up, whether it's a job or a business, in such a way where they cannot create wealth, except for maybe, I don't know, 40 years from now, maybe if they work long and hard. That's not the methodology that I teach. I teach you, yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to work hard. Uh, yeah, but here's what, for a short time, a very, very short time. And then what you did starts working for you. So I would highly recommend this book because two reasons. Number one, if, you're, if you have any interest in money, and I think, I mean, I believe in money. I think, I think money is good and rich is even better. But I, I believe that because not only can it enhance your own lifestyle, but you know, you can contribute. And that's what I'm a big believer in. When you have money, you can help other people. When you're broke, I don't know, you answer that question. What can you do? You're the one who's always a taking, okay? So I don't mean to mince words, but that's the way it is. Broke people have a hard time giving. They can give time and energy. That's important. But in some arenas, you need money. And so I'm, I'm a big believer in earning a lot of money so you can help a lot of people, all right? And that's the, so one thing. I think you should, I think you, life is too short and business and work is too hard in order to earn a meager income. So I, I want, I have a methodology that can help people actually create wealth and do it quickly. And there's not a person that I know that couldn't do it this way because I did it. I have tens of thousands of my students have done it the exact way. And the second reason you want to get the, the book is for you to model what we do. You want to see how we set ourselves up. You want to see what kind of promotion might come after it. You want to do that promotion. You want to see our funnel because I can tell you our funnel works really well. What we do, our system works well, right? So model what we do. And that's whether you like me or not, at least you can model what we do to be successful yourself. And the third reason to get the book is because I'm going to gift it to you free. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you free. Why? Because well, we don't always do this, but very simple. I want you to have the book. If I'm a big believer in learners, this is my mission in life is to help other people because I had such a huge struggle myself financially. And I, I was in such bad shape that I just, you know, one day actually, I was actually in tears and I looked up to the heavens and I said, spirit, universe, God, whatever's up there. If I just said, listen, I'm hurting here, but I, I promise you this, that if somehow, somehow, somehow I make it and I become successful, I will help other people become successful in the same way I did it. And so I'm just keeping a promise. So the book is yours download it get it i think you're going to really love it you're going to learn how to do some things that are going to create wealth for you and you're going to model what we do awesome harv thank you we'll we'll link up to that book along with this interview thank you once again for coming on uh and and as we said dropping some value bombs and just making this a really good time thank you so much handler and thank you everybody and bless you all